All right, guys, today I have Philip Pence with us, and Philip is actually one of our pros in the pro feedback uh, community. And Philip actually is, I basically reached out to Philip and asked him to be a part of this thing because he has been one of my sort of star syndicate members. Um, he has submitted music to me countless times for many, many different types of opportunities. And one of the main reasons why I wanted him specifically to be a part of this is because I do think it's really important for you guys to if you want to get feedback from a fellow producer, a fellow composer, you know, that is doing this alongside of you guys, but just has a real exceptional skill set at it. And I think that's the real value that um, Philip brings to the table. Um, and I've definitely, as I've been seeing some of his reviews, uh, he has a great way of giving you just direct truth about what you need to do about your, your track. He does it obviously in a gentle, positive way. But he's not going to sugarcoat, you know, what you really need to work on with your track. And I think some of you guys are really looking for that, really hungry for that kind of feedback, especially from somebody who is on the same team as you, right? They're also another composer, another producer, and also specifically working with libraries and building up your catalog as Philip is. So, Philip, thanks so much for being here today, man. Um, why don't you walk me through a little bit of your history in terms of how did you discover this whole crazy world of sync licensing way back when? Well, uh, thanks for having me. Um I grew up outside of Atlanta and, um, you know, was always, uh, pursuing the music thing and, uh, played in bands. I'm a bass player by trade and, and, um, then decided to move to Nashville years ago and pursue, um, you know, touring and songwriting and all that. And, and always had a, an interest in film scoring and writing songs but just didn't have any opportunities around Atlanta at that, at that time when I was growing up and, and, uh, Nashville was the closest songwriting community. Um, but still didn't really have any like film scoring film TV outlets. I mean, there was, there was talk on music row about, you know, you write these country songs or rock songs. And if you can't find a place for them, then we'll kick them over to the sync people and see if we can get a few dollars off of them. And then all of a sudden, you know, the streaming platforms took off and Netflix and all that stuff. And then all of a sudden it's like, Hey, let's just write songs for sync. And that's a big, uh, income stream for all the publishers and labels and all that stuff. So, um, it became more of an accepted thing, I guess, in, in the community where I live. And then, um, obviously COVID hit and everybody was at home and, you know, I was looking around on the internet and trying to figure out what to do because all the touring stopped and, and, uh, all the in-person songwriting sessions and all that stopped. And then I came across sync my music on YouTube and, and, um, you know, it really looked appealing. And at first I thought, well, I can do this, you know, after, you know, pitching to some libraries and, and looking myself, uh, for that and thinking, well, I mean, these songs sound pretty good that I'm doing. And, you know, quickly found out that they were either getting passed on or more frequently just no response from where I was sending them. And uh, so then I signed up for uh, Sync My Music, Sync Academy, um, which I will say is phenomenal. Um, you know, it's with all the tutorials that are that are so well done and that just walk you through step by step. Um, you know, I was quickly able to see why the tracks that I was making were missing the mark. Um, you know, I had I had the skills to write the song and produce the song, but I was just, for one, putting too many things in a song. Uh, I was all over the place in my arrangement and kind of building them like I was making a track to pitch to artist X, Y, or Z as opposed to having the service mindset of, hey, I'm providing uh, music for dialogue to be overlaid or, you know, to be underscored with action in a, in a film scene, you know. And to be honest, it really didn't take that long. Um, and it takes a little humility to sit there and say, okay, why am I missing this? You know, it's not perfect. And then just sit back, analyze for a second and say, all right, let's step back and try this again. And it, it's frustrating at first, but then once you get it, it's, it's like, all right, now I'm kind of in the, in the zone here. And then it's easier to figure out, 
if you still have something that misses the mark or, um, you know, you get finished with a track or you're halfway through a track and, and it's like something's wrong, something, something doesn't feel right, it's easier to step back, go through your mental checklist, and, it, you know, it becomes easier and easier to figure out um, where the, the, the lacking parts are. So anyway, um, my goal, uh, for 2021, um, during the new year was to get 10 songs into a library. Um, I'd gotten accepted into a library December 23rd, I think 2020 after a long 2020 of rejection after rejection after rejection for libraries. And I mean, I was so frustrated in December and. I was about to go to bed one night and I looked at my email and it said, Hey, we'd like to work with you as a composer. And, you know, it was just like, Oh man, you know, thank goodness. It's right when you needed it. Yeah. Right when you need it. And it's just enough to keep going. And so my goal was to have 10 songs in a library last year. And I think I got over 60. Um, I mean, I had 10 songs by February uh, with this library and it was just like, man, all right, cool. And so, you know, once, once I kind of figured out where I was lacking and what they were looking for, as far as they being that particular library and the industry, the sync licensing industry, um, it, it gave me a focus. So when I sit down at my computer and, you know, turn up, turn on logic and all that, then I've actually got a goal. I'm not just writing a song because I think it's cool. You know, totally. So My, that's great, what I love man. about bringing you onto the service is that you're even fresh from that experience of feeling yeah. really defeated, really not sure if you've got a place in this business, if this is all a waste of time. And right. that's where a lot of our members are. And a lot of people are definitely still in that phase of, I even had a member the other day uh, ask me, you know, he's been with a library for a year and hasn't gotten any placements at all. And he's like, well, is it them? Is it me? Is it my music? And I said, well, you know, we got this thing called pro feedback. And if you're not getting professional feedback on your music, you can at least cross that off your chest, uh, off your uh, checklist, because some people, um, if you don't know whether or not your music is really licensable and actually really competitive out there, and you just keep submitting it to a library and they keep, they keep accepting it, you might be shooting yourself in the foot, but it's this false sense of confidence that some people can get because they're getting into a library. And so, hey, I've got numbers, I've got, you know, tracks in there, but I got no placements at all. So there's a lot of things that you can be doing to, con you know, within your control to, um, you know, improve your odds of getting those placements. And I think the first thing for sure is to just know and be more honest with yourself. And like you said, with that humility, go, am I really there yet? I mean, a library, if, if, you, if anybody watching, if you guys are not aware, a library can accept music that's not exactly like the best quality um, because they think at some point, yeah, maybe we'll get a placement for this. But they're not necessarily only accepting like top notch stuff. Sometimes they'll accept, you know, a six out of 10 because they're like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I think we could get that and whatever, just throw it on the bunch and we can accept that one too. But that doesn't do you any favors as the composer, right? You got to make sure right. that you are bringing your own A game. It's really up to you to deliver high quality content. So, Philip, that's why I love uh, about having you here, man, is that you are pretty much really like just sort of fresh into that side of the, the, the equation of knowing what it felt like to be uncertain, to be unsure, to really not know what you're doing, and then sort of cross that bridge into this place of, oh, okay, I got accepted, they like my music, I'm great, I'm, I'm constantly building up my catalog, and I'm building my career now. So I think that's the unique perspective that you can really, because for me, it's, you know, that was 13, 12 years ago, it's been a long time. I try to get in touch with that, remember it sometimes, but you know, after a while, you sort of forget about it. But what's, what's really, really great about what you can bring there is you can really empathize, I think, with a lot of these guys and girls' um, situations where they are. I wanted to ask you, though, so you've definitely reviewed quite a bit of music in our first month already. Um, can you maybe point out some common mistakes, some things that as you've been listening to, you know, the tracks you've listened to that more than often uh, many producers are committing maybe these kind of common things that you're seeing that you, you you tend to feel like you're repeating on many of your review videos? Anything like that? Yeah, I think uh, one common mistake and it's something that I made uh, all the time early on is just putting too many things too many elements in at one time and it crowds the space you know i i told uh, a couple of people that i was reviewing last month you know it's kind of like when 
uh, you know, I'm, I come from a band background, so, you know, I always try to put it in that perspective where if you got the singer singing the song, that's the focus of the song at that moment. Then it comes to the guitar solo, the focus shifts, there's the guitar solo taking the spotlight, then it shifts back to the singer, the break with the drums and the rhythm section, or, you know, whatever the thing is, always have something that is taking the spotlight, not four things, you know, fighting for the spotlight, because that gets confusing, and then the listener just tunes out, and especially if you're trying to, a sync uh, editor is trying to uh, put dialogue on top of it, then you got this confusing thing down here, definitely not going to focus on the dialogue, you know, so they're going to kick that out. Awesome, man. And then how about some things that uh, producers are doing right? So, and I, I totally agree with you on that one. I, I give that note a lot, actually. Um, but in these videos now that you've been watching and or, or uh, tracks that you've been reviewing, maybe what are some of the things that you go like, wow, like you guys are really getting this right or getting that right? What are some things that you, when you hear it, you go, okay, that's definitely putting you on a path towards getting placements, anything like that? A lot. I, I would say most of the tracks that I reviewed, uh, I was pleasantly surprised to see that the emotion and the vibe uh, that these producers were going for was spot on, straight out of the gate. Um, and I could tell what the emotion was. It wasn't this confusing um, up, down, up, down, left, right thing. You know, it was everybody staying with the same emotion all the way through. Uh, the hiccup there, I think, is you know, back to putting too many things in. There's just every once in a while you can tell when, uh, and I, I know it from my own experience that the mindset was, oh man, I've been doing this for a minute. I need to put something else in there. So here's just a random symbol or a random kick drum that's out of out of place. And and it all of a sudden distracts from the, from the vibe, which is, you know, and I, I'll tell people when I'm reviewing, that's an easy fix. Um, a lot of times what I like to do when I'm producing tracks is when I think I'm close to finished, you know, take a break, go get some water, coffee, take a walk around the block, come back, listen to it with somewhat fresh ears. And, and if I'm, if I am, um, singing something that, you know, the beat's going and I'm sitting there and going, duck up, duck up, duck up, duck up, duck up, then it's like, well, maybe that needs to be in there. You know, if I'm singing a part that's not in there, let's just take a second and see if we can figure it out. Sometimes you you do that, and it's like, no, that's not it, and erase it. And and I I tell people also that a great skill to learn is the ability to say what I've just been working on for the past thirty minutes is not working, and delete, and let's go back and take another path. That's super yeah. hard too, because oh, you, yeah. <laughs> you have some ideas and you have some ambitions and it's like, I know, I think this can work out. And then you're just literally trying to Frankenstein this thing together. And I, yeah. I think you're absolutely right. There is a moment and it's a weird balance because sometimes that moment can feel like it happens, you know, four hours into the track oh, and yeah. you know, you're like, well, I sunk four hours into this thing. I don't want to just bail on it. And I've actually had it in my career where Sometimes it was a waste of time to keep moving forward with it. And I wasted another four hours before I finally got wise and said, all right, just yeah. start over. But other times a new instrument idea comes in and it like fixes everything. It like gave me this new focus for yeah. it. And so I, I don't know if I, I could tell anybody where that line is for them. You know, you kind of have to like sort of experiment with your own sort of creativity and what sure. works for you. But I do know that it's a weird fine balance where sometimes there is a path of a point of no return where you really should just bail on it. But other times yeah. you do want to maybe just have some faith that like there's still a kernel there that you just haven't quite let blossom yet. Right. And you have to kind of keep digging and digging until you find it. So I, I, I think kinda... the only way literally to figure that out is just keep writing, you know, just write as yeah. much music as you possibly can every single day, get into a habit of writing and you'll start to learn for yourself like what works or what doesn't. So And, I, and don't be afraid to try things. I mean, right. I, I think the producer world is trial and error. I mean, sometimes it's, for me, it's like, I don't know what this synth patch does because I've never used it before. So I just go down the list, you know, record the part and then just audition 10 different sounds. Sometimes none of them work. Sometimes you find one that you would never have chosen and it's like, oh, this thing is great, you know. Perfect, man. Yeah. And uh, 
you know, I, it's kind of like the story of my whole producing career is just basically pressing buttons and seeing what they do. You know, you can definitely have the fundamental understanding of what a compressor does, how an EQ works, how a limiting, you know, uh, plugin works. You can have all obviously all the, um, uh, the the philosophical understanding of how all these tools work. But it's not until you start clicking on things, pressing things, turning knobs, and you hear what it does to your music or how the sound interacts with the rest of the sounds that yeah. you have to now go with your gut to go like, all right, is this working or is this not working? So that's what's so magical and, and also very frustrating <laughs> about what we yeah. do is it's an art. You know, there is no sort of, all right, one plus two, that's, a, you know, and this, we were, I was talking about this with, uh, with Trevor, one of the other pros, that a lot of producers get stuck in this checklist thing where it's like, okay, they want a hip hop song with guitars. Okay, hip hop kick, hip hop snare, and rock guitars. Check, check, check. I have I've met all the the, the standards yeah. for this brief, and you hear it, and it just has no emotion. It's just stiff, or it doesn't work, or whatever. So you yeah. you don't you can't look at this as just literally a checklist sort of a thing. There has to be this kind of creative originality, this spark that comes from within you that you have to trust your own creative choices um, to move forward. And like you said. Um, Taking a bunch of taking a bunch of shots at it, and not every single one is going to work out great. But that doesn't mean you're a terrible producer. It just means that you are discovering, you know, what really works. Every time right. you find something that doesn't work, you can cross that off your list. All right, that doesn't work, you know. Well, so, and I think you're a better producer if you if you can say to yourself, "This isn't working. Let me back up and try a different road." Absolutely, uh, the, man. The amateur well, producer is going to try to just force that square peg correct. into the circle hole, you know. Yeah, the humility to realize, okay, I got to back off of this one. It's not it. Yeah, that's right. that's wise, wise words. So thank you uh, so much, Philip, for being with us today. Um, if you guys are not in pro feedback, I highly encourage you to join us, especially if you feel that anxiety or that uncertainty or just not really sure, or maybe you were in Philip's shoes, you know, where he was a couple years back. You know, kind of getting brand new started into this thing, but not really sure because he hasn't been accepted yet. So if you want to get rid of that uncertainty and get more clarity on what you need to do to improve your tracks to control what you can control, which is the quality of your production, you can absolutely control that. But getting some professional ears on your music and definitely somebody like Philip, who's really just recently been there, uh, could really help you guys out. So I encourage you guys to join us. The link will be right down below in the description box if you want to learn more. Thanks so much, Philip. Thank you, man. Appreciate it.